All right, so let's carry on to part two, reliability. So it's, reliability is probably one that you feel quite comfortable with, but I can promise you that there are parts of reliability. It, it's not just about repeating the experiment more times. There, there, are, there is a variety more things to do, especially when you see a full marker for how to improve the reliability. Do you really just want to write, do the experiment more times? So yeah, let's try to have a bit more variety in our reliability. Make sure that you can reliably get more marks. Get it? <laughs> All right, so what is reliability, right? Let's just quickly go through what is reliability, right? What is reliability? It's all about reducing, reducing random error, right? Reducing random error. So what's random error? So in contrast to the systematic error that we met last um, video, Random error is error that is uh, a random direction and random magnitude. What do I mean by this? So for example, <laughs> um, maybe sometimes you measure something, right? Sometimes you measure maybe the length of a stick, right? You measure the, the, the length of a scraggly stick, right? You measure the length of a stick with, with your ruler. And like sometimes you say, oh, you know, I, I reckon it's you know 1.1 centimeters. And then sometimes else you might say it's 1.2. Otherwise it might be 1.0, it might, might be 0 0.8 centimeters. Or it might be 1.3 centimeters. So see how we can go up both above and below. Like, you know, let, let's say that in reality is actually just uh, one centimeter exactly. We can see that our measurements go up both above and below the true value. So they have a, both a random direction and a random magnitude. Whereas before, with this, with the you know the, the the broken scale, all the readings would be off by 0 0.05 grams. Right, everything would just be plus 0 0.05 grams. So that's what our random error is, right? So so we want to reduce our random error. Now, you, unfortunately, unlike a systematic error, you can't get rid of random error just by uh, measuring things better. You have to do, uh, but be, thankfully, because it's in the random direction and the random magnitude, by using statistics, statistically speaking, if you repeat the measurement over and over and over and over and over again, all the fluctuations should cancel out and you're left with the true value, right? So therefore, reliability very often gets kind of clumped together with how many times, how many repetitions, right? How many, how many repetitions you do, Repe repetitions of the experiment. <laughs> but it's not just how many repetitions that you do, right? In fact, uh, it's a common gripe that I have. A lot of students tell me, oh, it's in, you know, how, many it's how many repetitions you do. But that's not just it, right? It's how many repetitions you do and then you average, right? And then you average, average the values. Because just because you do the experiment more times, it doesn't mean that you get rid of that random error. To get rid of that kind of unevenness, you need to actually average them to get rid of that random error. And finally, one and finally, another element of, of reliability is the consistency of your results, right? Consistency. So it's not just about how many times you did the experiment. Let's say that you did it one thousand times, right? But you get things from like zero point five centimeters to like ten centimeters. You know something's going on, right? So there's very poor consistency. It's not. That's what I was saying, right? It's not just about how many times you do it. It's about how how close, how consistent your results are. Because if it's like this, you know it's not that reliable, right? So let's go into more detail in, with, in, with, that, in, in, with that, when we go to how to assess, right? So let's assess reliability. <laughs> so let's assess reliability. So, when we want to assess reliability, the first thing that we do is we can talk about how many times was it? How many times times was the experiment repeated? Was the experiment right? More times the better. Generally, you want to aim for something around three to five times is pretty reliable.
Number two, you want to look at data variation, right? Data variation. Now, let's say that you have the luxury of doing this at home, maybe it's for a depth study, then you would want to calculate stuff like the standard deviation, right? You want to calculate the standard deviation, the variance, uh, measures of spread, right? Mode. But let's say that you're in an exam, you don't really have the luxury of calculating the, the standard deviation. You can just kind of quant qualitatively say, oh, you know, um, all the data was, was quite clustered, all, all the data was was quite clustered. So all the data was, was quite clustered, so that, and there was low, low, low variation. You don't need to substantiate it with like stats. Uh, another thing that you can say is um, outliers. So it kind of goes, kind of feeds into data variation. Um, if there's uh, having outliers reduces your reduces your reliability. Okay. Another way, so, so just for this previous point, I realized I missed something. Another way to kind of uh, assess data variations, this, this is maybe if you have a table, right? Let's say that you have a graph, right? Let's say that, that you graphed it quickly and then you have like a, you know, stuff like that. You, you can talk about uh, how close it is, how close points, how close points are to the line of best fit. So just quickly summarize that. To assess, we want to look how many times it was repeated. If the data variation was big or small, you want it to be small, and if there were outliers. So then finally, let's have a look at how we can improve our reliability. So number one is that we can repeat it more times, right? Repeat more times. And average, right? And average. Take, take the average. And the reason for this is because, you know, as we repeat it more times, then the, then the random error gets removed. Remove the outliers. So there's only, uh, only if you have outliers in the data sets. So if the data set doesn't have any outliers, this, this might not be um, a, a terribly valid point. Or you can say like, you know, when they do repeat more times, make sure that you do remove the outliers. The last one's the most important. Uh, it's probably the most uh, uh, new one to you. And that's a test over a large range. Test over a large range of independent values. And take the line of S fit. Why is this? So there's two elements here. <laughs> First of all, a line of best fit, so the line of best fit is better than the average, right? Why is that? Because mathematically speaking, mathematically speaking, when you take the line of best fit for a set of points, right? What happens is that, uh, like, just if you look at the mathematics, and like you can prove it if you like, um, it gives less weight to the outliers, right? So the line of best fit gives less weight to outliers. It gives less weight to outliers, right? It gives less weight to outliers. And that's good, because we want to give the outliers less power. We want the, 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 the points with, with less random error that are closer to the uh, trend to have more power. Uh, the second effect of why you want to test, so that's part one, the reason why you want to test over a larger range is so is such that not only do you get more it, it, you get more you get more data points where you, you get more data but 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 you, you also validate it over, but but you validate the trend validate trend over more independent values right Um, and I guess finally, um, also something is that um, as you spread it out, as you have more and more data values towards, uh, as you make this, this kind of longer and longer, what that means is that um, 
your your line of best fit becomes more and more accurate because uh, you you you're doing it over a very big range. Uh, it the line of best fit gets more and more accurate when you have a very when it's very when it's over a very big X range and a big very big Y range. Or at least over like a bigger domain. Okay, I think. <coughs> sorry. Okay, I think that is about um, all we have time for for the reliability. Let's go on to validity. <laughs>